Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called the Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta to our weekly coffee chat. Of course, again, it's bi-weekly for my channel and bi-weekly for Catherine's meeting. We switch off. We alternate every other week. How are you doing today, Catherine? I'm doing really good, and I keep looking to one side because my naughty little cat is just about to knock everything <laughs> off the shelf unit, but hey-ho. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, balancing on everything, so she's just about to launch herself on me. I'm doing, I'm doing really good. It's been an interesting 24 hours, let's put it that way. I'm not one of these people that's into Mercury retrograde, but I might have to concede this time. <laughs> So. Mercury retrograde. I, I've had some Mercury retrogrades that have been horrific emotionally. Knock on wood, thank God, this Mercury retrograde, the only thing that's been going on has been technical issues, which is mm -hmm. typically because Mercury is communication. So, you know, your computer might have an issue, your car might have an issue, you know, cell phones, you're not supposed to sign new contracts during Mercury retrograde, that kind of stuff. So knock on wood, we're almost out of the woods. It mm -hmm. has literally just been like, technical issues which is totally fine <laughs> it's just kind of something you can laugh about so um so yeah guys if you're if you're feeling a little crazy this week it's probably mercury retrograde it's probably not you so just take a deep breath um, that's what i'm i'm blaming it and i'm sticking to it yeah <laughs> i'm um i saw this great meme once um where someone was like i need a white girl with a nose ring who has crystals to tell me which planet's in retrograde right now to make my life miserable and someone responded earth <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is big exactly. so. yeah that's what i normally don't because i'm like you know i'm not going to fall into the fact of like inviting it in but then sometimes you have to sort of say yeah this time that's true it's so for me it's it. definitely not not that i'm imagining things because i very much don't put that out there but then i do have to admit this time i think there's a few things <laughs> yeah you just roll with it and yeah. you know um you know I, there's also a meme that's like i i wish your mercury to be a little less retrograde and a little bit more freddy you know like just just uh or my favorite meme people will share when we come out of mer mercury retrograde is like we're out of Mer mercury retrograde now so now everything actually is your fault <laughs> you know? yes exactly I, that's my fault. favorite one i love that i really love that so, yeah <laughs> so well i thought that we would have a fun a fun coffee chat today you guys because you know one of my favorite topics in the world is paranormal phenomenon i love ghost stories i love the weird and the wacky and i think that for a lot of us watching i, I was telling you off catherine off camera catherine that i think that um we're at this beautiful time i think maybe because of the internet where people are feeling a little bit more confident sharing their stories because so many people don't like to share their stories in the past because maybe they feel like they're crazy or they're going to get called names or something. And now we're getting a little bit more confidence up about sharing our experiences. I know I've had a ton of paranormal experiences that have really changed me. And part of the reason why I think I quote unquote woke up because I already knew something wasn't as they told, you know, told us it mm -hmm. was because of weird experiences so i thought today i'd messaged you earlier catherine i want you to tell our audience story time with catherine of a paranormal experience that you had in your life that changed you well there's been a few and i'm going to change a few names for confidentiality reasons because they're all quite personal really but one of my earliest memories, I must have been about seven or eight years old, and uh, a relative, a very close relative who had children as well, um, they were very close relatives, but we didn't see each other. The two families didn't see each other a lot, even though we, we live very close together, but the children were a similar age. 
Um, but they had a baby, and when the baby was um, under a year old, I think they were, you know, between six months and a year, I woke up one morning with a really and i was only about seven or eight at the time and i woke up one morning with a really strong i can remember going in for breakfast and i can remember saying to my big sister i had a dream about baby i'm not going to say his name last night and i said it was a really weird dream and i i couldn't get back to sleep and um you know it was really real and and it wasn't that i knew what had happened in the dream but i it was like this baby was talking to me and I literally, it was so unusual because I hadn't seen, I'd only seen the baby once since he was born and we weren't close. So there was no, there was no trigger why I should be thinking about that. And my elder sister said, that's really weird. I had to dream about him too. I and, it was, and it was on my, this it was on my birthday. That's right. That's why we were, my big sister was actually being nice to me for once. And um, and anyway, it was really spooky. And then that was first thing in the morning. So it would have been about seven o'clock in the morning. That afternoon, we get a phone call from the distraught parents saying that he died of a cop death. And I knew before the phone rang, I knew I still get goose bumps now. I knew what happened. But obviously at that age, I'd never heard of cop death. I mean, I, I had no idea what it was as a young child. Is that like, would that like be SIDS? Yeah, like, SIDS. Yeah, it's SIDS. And um, of course, now we know a lot more about what might have caused that and everything. But it was just the most bizarre experience because uh, uh, before he died, he was talking to me in my dream. Like, like a little adult, actually. And there wasn't fear and there wasn't distress from him or anything, but there was a knowing and from the, how it changed me is at that time there was so much distress obviously everyone was so upset the parents never got over it yep. um and it wasn't something we could talk about but my sister and i used to look at each other with that knowing and but we couldn't say anything to the adults because the adults were also sort of trauma i mean what an absolute horrific thing to happen um so it was one of those things where how it really changed me because this is why with this sort of great awakening nothing to me has been a surprise because there's so many incidents like this that have happened throughout my childhood i'll come on to another one in a minute well i just knew the realm wasn't as we were told it was i just knew it wasn't um so it really had a big impact on me because it made me realize that we're all connected in ways that we don't know about how we're connected and i've spoken quite a few times about animal communication and I've always known I could communicate with animals, as can everyone, nothing special about me at all. But as an adult, I went through quite intensive training just to make sure that I wasn't making it up. Because when you're channeling or communicating with a different species or with the dead, you know, you there's got to be some verification that it's not all in your mind. Yeah. So, again, this this experience with this young relative, this baby... It really changed my whole interaction because it really made me realise that I was aware of things that I assumed everyone else was aware of, but they weren't. So then you're in that awkward situation where if you bring it up, you're very quickly shut down because of the adults are in trauma about it and it's not seen as appropriate. So then you can't explore it more. Um, so that was a really big impact and it's always left me. And funny enough, I've never really... I'm not even sure how much my sister remembers about it, but I will ask her one day. Um, so that was one one example. Another example, I can remember going out with my two sisters on a bike as a child. And um, I literally, when I went out on the bike, we were going down this little country lane and I had this flashback into another life. And I knew it was another life because what I was wearing... The bike was completely different. It was all very old fashioned, you know. I was wearing very old fashioned sort of, you know, jacket and long skirt and lace up boots and everything. And I had a little basket on my bike. And but it can't have been that long ago in history because it was um, a car, but it was a very old fashioned motor vehicle. Like early Came 20th century. Yeah. It, yeah, so it would have been that time scale because it wasn't a horse and cart. It was a car, but a very, very first model car came around the corner and knocked us both off our bikes and killed us, me and my elder sister. 
and it was really weird because when we used to go out and it was so vivid i was on this bike and it was like you know in the movies how when you sort of almost like go into a parallel universe as i was cycling with my sisters down this country lane we went around a corner it was like i almost went through a wormhole into the net into the past life and it was so clear and so vivid but it really explains why i've always been nervous about myself and my children cycling down country lanes and how i've always you? I, how old were you uh, been? I would have been it would have been very similar age it would have been actually probably a bit younger probably about six because we were still in our old house so it was a bit younger I'd have been about five or six wow um and it was really bizarre because it was like again this realization as a child it didn't seem weird it was just something that happened but I couldn't understand why my sisters hadn't seen it yeah, you know what's crazy? You saying that I um when I when we lived in Athens, Georgia, I was telling you off camera. We we moved out of Athens, Georgia when I was four. My father went to vet yeah. school at university, so I have all. I used to love when I was a little kid. There was two movies that I would watch over and over and over again: The Sound of Music and the nineteen sixty eight Oliver, the the Oliver Twist yeah. the story of you know with I love Nancy and the anyway. And I had this little Fisher Price yellow table. I remember like plastic picnic table I would sit on to watch, you know, and play and watch these movies over and over and over again. And I used to tell my mom when we when I would watch The Sound of Music, you guys, I was probably three, maybe four, because we moved when I was four. I would tell my mom, while The Sound of Music was on, on don't worry, mom, we're blonde hair, blue eye, blue eyed this this time, we're, we're going to be okay. I was referring to the Holocaust is what yeah. I was referring to. And my mother used to laugh about it. And then I went back and I watched the movie again, The Sound of Music, when I was in India, my first trip, when I was in my early 30s. And I got, I felt like all the color like left my body because I realized throughout the whole movie, even though the person watching the movie, an adult would know the backdrop is World War II. Yeah. Besides the one scene with the Nazi flag, they don't mention anything about World War II. And the, they're running from the Nazis at the end. They don't mention the Holocaust. They don't mention anything about the Jewish people, nothing. So I get that. I like, how did I, what, what, what was I referencing? And what, yeah. did I, you know, what did that movie? So I, I totally get what you're saying where it's so like, and at, at six years old, you wouldn't have really known much about the early 20th That's century or. Absolutely nothing. Uh, Cause we didn't watch much telly as children, but yeah. we much on and secondly so we we'd watch things like like oliver at christmas time you know christmas time we'd all sit down and watch a family movie and things and all the old classics but we didn't watch television regularly um so i i just wouldn't have seen it it was really odd um but so these experiences as a very young child i always a hundred percent it wasn't that i believed in reincarnation i actually knew yeah. reincarnation is real so it was that that's always been inherent right and i didn't grow up in a religious family at all you know we might have gone to church at christmas and weddings and funerals and that was it um we got dragged along at school quite uh, at times but you know i didn't pay any attention um and so i just had an absolute knowing about reincarnation i absolutely knew that we can all talk telepathically with anything and everyone and I absolutely knew that included dead people as well. Um, and funny enough, my father, who's obviously no longer with us anymore, he always wanted to go and watch mediums in halls and things. And I would always go, he'd always ask me as an adult, this wasn't as a child, to come with him. And, you know, most of the other family members poo-pooed it. But I could never persuade him to go on one-on-one. -on -one. But after my grandma died, um, my mum's mum, who I was very close to, we were all very close to her, um, after she decided, I decided to go and see a medium. And um, it was a really weird experience because they said some things that I just couldn't verify one way or the other about other family members. And I just didn't know. My mum was very sceptical, so I didn't really feel I could ask her too many questions about it. I asked her a few in a roundabout way. But I didn't really go full in because I, I didn't want to. And also she would have been quite upset about me connecting in with her mum, I think. Um, but this medium said something really bizarre. And he said, um, be careful about the Egyptian. And this isn't racist, guys. She, so this was my grandma who died about six months earlier. 
talking through a medium to me and she said be careful about the egyptian man he's going to seem really lovely but he's not to be trusted be really careful about the egyptian man and at the time i did that was probably one of the bits of the communication i paid the least attention to because i didn't know any egyptian men at all so i mentioned it to my sisters and my sister said well my husband's working with an egyptian man on a business deal um, I wonder if it's that, but he's really nice. They've known each other for years. I'm sure he's not dodgy at all. So anyway, I said to him, well, just warn your husband to be careful because I assumed it was that because I, I didn't know any Egyptian men at that stage. Um, anyway, roll forward the cock 15 years later. I was doing a business deal with someone and they were an Egyptian man, and it was to do a, a long story, I uh, got introduced, seemed like this guy was doing amazing charity work, amazing nature work, got involved in some of the staff, as did some colleagues and things, and um, then it started to go tits up, and I started to see a very different side of it, and it started to go very wrong, and I didn't put two and two together at all because at the time when I'd spoken to the medium, because I didn't know an Egyptian man, I immediately thought they were referring to my sister's husband's business partner. Right. I just assumed because that was the only connection we had at the time. And so I didn't think about it. Anyway, this started getting more and more nasty. And I was talking to my older sister again. It's always my older sister, not my twin sister. And she said to me, she went literally white as a she, and she said, oh, my God, do you remember that reading? Because they'd all poo-pooed me for having the reading. But I'd let, it was tapes. It was so long ago, you you got a cassette tape of it, of a recording you got given afterwards. There was no Zoom video of it or anything. And she went really white, and she said, my God, do you remember what was on your tape about the Egyptian man? And I was like went white sheep and all the goosebumps went up and hey, so yeah, I got goosebumps right now, yeah. frantically went searching for this little old cassette tape because I mean we'd moved house twice by then I didn't know where it was managed to find it and I played it and I kid you not unbelievable so this was my dead grandmother 15 years before the event happens telling me so accurately about something that was happening in my future but the, again it's this collapsing of timelines that there is no past present yeah. future so when we're having these conversations everything to me hasn't been a surprise because there's been so many incidents like this throughout my life which have shown that time's not real that's definitely shown that reincarnation is real that definitely shown that we can all communicate telepathically to different realms to different species um but the frustration has always been it, it's had a huge impact on me on my inner knowing which is why most of this stuff as it's coming out hasn't surprised me at all but it's still frustrating because you know we live in such a society you know i was a scientist a lot of my friends are scientists and very much in that academic circle where if you can't prove it it didn't exist right so that frustration that even though you know something's really true a lot of people don't believe you because you can't explain it otherwise it's like on a yeah. base level it's like so many people especially before we had cell phones so for if you remember back when we only had landlines and yeah. there was no caller id so many times you would know someone was going to call you right before they called you you know yes, there's that, that psychic awareness of of each other and your energetic field which you know because your energetic field goes beyond your body and um yeah, it's it's and it changes you because there is yeah, there is no logical explanation, but it happened. And that, what so, I love about it is it is it sounds right. But oh, I don't know what happened there. Was that a ghost coming through? No. <laughs> I know. <Nan, laughs> if you've got if you have got something to say, honestly, please feel free and join. You found the right um, channel, you found the right people, say it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We we you're well everyone's welcome here. I can't remember what I was going to say there, but it's this lovely, um, it's lovely knowing. I've reached a stage now, and I can remember it was a guy that I used to do a lot of work with on, on that still good friends with on the health side called Troy Case, the certified health nut. He's absolutely amazing at all things natural health, nutrition, etc. And we were doing a, a talk together once, and I can remember he said this again, probably about 10 years ago. And there were a lot of sciencey people there and poo-pooing, show me the double-blind placebo trial, whatever. And I can remember him standing there saying, look, 
I know I don't need to dig out the research to show you because if you've got that sort of attitude, you're not whatever I give you, you're going to poo poo or look for fault. It's like, you know, as we always say with, with Wayne Dyer, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So are you listening to find fault and criticism or are you listening to learn? And it's not that we should all believe everything that everyone says. No, 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 not that at all. But when you're seeing someone who's standing in front of you that is the absolutely epitome of physical health, I personally would listen to their advice on health and nutrition a lot more than our health secretary, who's obesely overweight, really unhealthy, looks 20 years older than they are. Same in America. <laughs> and it's not a criticism of the person. We're all on different journeys. But it's like you and I have talked so much about who do you take your advice from? Well, are they walking the talk? Yeah. Are they living in congruence with what they're talking about? We can all talk about... Um, spiritual things as much as we like but are we living it are we embodying it are we working on ourselves are we doing the shadow work i've got a brilliant thing that i'm going to suggest you for our, our video next week i'll speak to you about that offline um involves the law of one you know so who do you listen to and and we don't need now i think most people watching will understand science has its place but we all know science can be completely corrupted mm -hmm. We all know a lot depend the results you get will depend on who funded the study. Yeah, we all know yeah. that real things can be hidden. Um, and um, it makes me laugh in this sort of current reality where people are sort of saying this has never been done before. Well, hello, free energy, hidden, Tesla, you know, all these yeah. healing modalities have been hidden. So I've these paranormal experiences that I've had, and I've had many more. Can I tell you one more about one more? Absolutely, one? absolutely. I am so fortunate to have such great sponsors on this channel. Our sponsors, as well as our patrons, are the people who keep the lights on here at Esoteric Atlanta so I can continue delivering videos to you multiple times a week. I am so lucky to be a part of Gnostic TV, to have a SIA as a sponsorship, and to now be sponsored by the incredible Spooky2 company. Spooky2 is like a rife machine generator to help you in your journey through this human experience. If you want more information on Spooky2 and what it can do for you, there will be a video down in the description box. If you would like to purchase Spooky2, there are a few different discount codes that you can do, all of which you can, again, find down in the description box below. For the 11 year anniversary of Spooky2, for particular products that are listed for the anniversary sale, you can get 9% off of these said products by entering Happy Bryce in checkout. For all additional products, the regular products, you can get 5% off by entering Bryce Watson when you check out. Here is a little clip of what Spooky2 can do for you. Hi, Joan, Echo, and the Spooky2 team. This is Kanika here, and I'm here to share not just my and my partner's Spooky2 journey. Spooky2 has been superbly special for my partner and I. I'm actually sitting in the Scala field. In our personal experiences, my partner and I have uh, literally gone off all our, our vitamin and multivitamin multivitamin and mineral supplements. We hardly take them. We used to take them to support and supplement our well-being. But I've been using the daily wellness protocol and my hair has just exploded in its growth. The skin's gotten uh, beautiful. The DH experimental frequencies, I've been experimenting with a lot of them. We have such good strength in our body. We don't fall ill to an extent that my partner has hay fever. Peter, he has hay fever, but this time, I've started using the Immune Super Booster and oh my God, it is magic. Uh, we recently this year purchased the remotes as well. So we use our DNA clipping and we put our clippings in it. And uh, it's just been so beautiful and profound. And I have always been, so I pray daily, I meditate daily. And I've been sitting in the scalar field and meditating and praying. And 
my psychic abilities, my connection to the divine, if I just want to put it in a nutshell, is just increasingly becoming so potent. I've been using the 12 strand DNA activation as well in the DH experimental frequencies just to see how it goes. And the, the effects are so magnificent in our, on our physical bodies and our like um, energetic field. I'm an energy healer. I take clients through um, quantum healing sessions while sitting in the field so that they can also, I can be a clearer conduit and send these energies as well by pure quantum entanglement, right? And if people were to not believe this, all this physical proof shows what a gem of a product this is. I can't like recommend this more to anybody like. So yes, much love and gratitude. Thank you for listening. And uh, I could share so much more, but I'd like to wrap this up now. Thank you. Absolutely. So I, my childhood dream, always obsessed with horses. When I was 14, I we bought a horse off one of my mum's friends that they needed to find a home for it quickly. The love of my life, completely overhorsed, far too much for me, got bolted off with everywhere, deposited in all sorts of places over the countryside, but I still loved her to bits. When I went out, I met a friend riding and we live over beautiful Heathland. You can ride for miles through the woods and the heath and everything and not see a soul. And of course, in those days, there was no mobile phones or anything like that. So your parents had no idea. So we'd go out on our ponies all day and no one would know where you are. Anyway, she took me to a new area that I hadn't been on. Um, and when we started going up this path, my horse completely refused to move. Not only did she refuse to move, she started doing many rears, which was unusual for her. She'd bark, but she never rear, spun round and would whiz off with me in the other direction. And for love or money, I could not get her to go up this path. And my friend turned around, who'd lived in near this path we were at, um, lived in that area. She turned around and she said, you know, this is Hangman's Alley. This is where they used to hang the highway robbers, exactly where my horse refused to go past. They read energy. Listen, horses and dogs, those two animals, man, don't, there are a lot of true humans I don't trust, but I trust a horse and I trust a dog. <laughs> oh, completely. And so, of course, I then didn't make her because I, oh, thank you so much for telling me. And I was like, well, I don't want to go up there because I couldn't feel it myself, yeah. but she absolutely could. There was no way she was going past this place. And it was exactly where she wouldn't go past was the tree where they used to hang them from. That reminds me of a story I shared at the beginning of my journey on YouTube. I'll tag it down below, guys. You can watch it. The Lavinia Fisher story, um, the first woman to be executed in America in Charleston, South Carolina. I, there's a whole story around it. Um, it was a huge... Anyway, just it, it taught, and what happened in modern times with these big con con construction workers trying to rebuild the courthouse in Charleston. I'll put it down, guys, because it's the same thing. Like where there were heavy executions and you know of course back in those days i i probably could make an educated guess that maybe 70 percent of the people that were executed probably were innocent you know yeah. like they were easy scapegoats and so you know that that's that terror that anger that fear that gets stuck in that area you know of, of what's about to happen to them i'll tell one story too and again a lot of these paranormal experiences that we have are really for us. It's for our own gnosis. Yes. You know, Absolutely. it's for our own understanding. We we live in this world that's very matrixy. And when we say when I say the matrix in this way, I don't the matrix it, the matrix isn't always bad, right? Like you uh, look at the Saturnalian energy, of course they've manipulated Saturn, but it's literally father time. You know, something Saturnalian in our matrix we gotta pay bills. We gotta go to work. Like it's just you're being part of the, the the template of being human, right? So we live in this very matrixy world where we get up every day, we eat breakfast, we do our stuff, we go to work, we come home, we get older, we had birthdays, we go on vacations, and then you know you you end up passing away, and it's just kind of this this timelines that are given to you at birth, um, and then you have something happen to you or multiple things happen to you where you realize that this this body you're in, this life that you're inhabiting right now is is not it's just a blip and i remember i was probably i was eight i was probably either eight or it just turned nine 
because my grandmother had passed away, my mom's mom. And I loved my mom's mom. My grandmother, Maxine, my mom's mom, really, I would spend a lot of time with her as a kid because my mother had some miscarriages between me and my sister. So I would go spend a lot of time with my grandmother. Very close to my grandmother. I was her first grandbaby. Um, and she passed away at 62, I believe, of breast cancer. So when she passed away, I was distraught because she was like my best friend. Um, I felt safe with her and loved with her. But in my mind, she was also old because she was my grandmother. I was young. But now I'm looking 62 is freaking wow. young. Like That's super young, you know. And when my grandmother passed away, my grandfather had previously passed away four years earlier. So my mother at that time in her like early 30s didn't have either one of her parents, you know. So now at 41, I look, I can understand the stress my mother was under, like lo the sorrow of losing her parents, now not having any parents, just having her sisters, you know, there was a lot of emotion. I was distraught because my grandmother, it's the first death I'd experienced where I really understood what was happening. You know, before that, as a child, it's don't, you don't really understand it. Now, remember now, first of all, I lived in an extremely haunted house. My, the house, most houses down here are haunted. So I was not a stranger to weird ghosts in our house. And sometimes there was one ghost in our house that wasn't that nice. And so I would always sometime often sneak in my sister's room and get in the bed with my sister. That happened a lot. And my room was here. My sister's room was here. And this one night I was laying in my bed in my room and our doors were open. The, I was upset because we liked to, add, we, we wanted our parents to leave the hallway light on. And for some reason, the hallway light was turned off and I was feeling kind of scared and I was upset, but I didn't want to go turn the hallway light on because I didn't want to get in trouble. So I was like, I'm just going to go get in my sister's bed. So I got in my bed and I, I back in the nineties, there was this really trendy thing to do, especially in the United States, maybe in the UK too, called sponge painting. Do you guys remember sponge painting where you paint the walls with a sponge? Well, my sister's room had sponge painting and this is, so you take a sponge and you, you, it was turquoise sponge. So a little, you know, kind of look like splattered paint on the wall, a little bit more not like it didn't look like graffiti it was just it was a style of, of how you did, did the walls and so I got in my sister's bed with her and I turned my back to the door and my sister was sleeping right here and so I was watching the wall where all these little sponge paintings these little designs with a sponge painting and then all of a sudden this light comes down the hall and as the light's coming down the hall my first reaction is somebody turned the hall light on and then the light got so bright my back was to it, but I, I was watching the wall because the door was open. So I was watching the, the, the sponge painting on the wall and it got so bright on the wall that I had to close my eyes because it was so bright, but I felt peaceful and then it went away. And then like two seconds later, I hear my dad running down the hall, like hightailing it running down the hall. And I didn't know what had happened. I was just laying there in the bed. I ended up falling asleep peacefully. Didn't say anything to my parents. Didn't know what had gone on. Well, the very next day, we had in that same hallway, we had a phone. This is, again, the landline. So you had a phone. And there was a seat by the table with the phone. That's where my mother would sit on the phone and talk to her friends. This was before even cordless phones were big. Yeah. I was in my room playing. I think I was playing with my Barbies or something. I was young. And I remember hearing my mom, because the door again was open, was on the phone and she was telling whoever she was talking to that she had been distraught the night before was just in their bed crying because her mother had passed away just so distraught meanwhile i was in my room upset and scared too and she said all of a sudden this light just appeared this bright light just appeared in their doorway and just she said her and my dad were just before my parents were divorced were just like stunned and in shock and then the light turned away around and went down the hall. And my dad actually apparently grabbed his, this thing, because he didn't know what it was, grabbed it and ran down the hall to chase it. But by the time he got to the end of the hall, it was gone. And my mother was saying on the phone that she thought it was her mom. Mm -hmm. She thought, even though my dad, I think my dad thinking, well, if this is a, an intruder, I've got to protect my family. But, but um, my mother was like, I felt so much peace because I felt like it was my mom coming back to tell me it was okay. And I, I stood at the door and I looked at my mom. I said, mom, I saw it too. And my mom like said, I got to call you back. And she goes, what did you see? I said, I, I saw that light too. I was like, I snuck into Mary Becca's room, my sister's room. And I saw it and I heard, I, I saw it, it. It was so bright, even against the wall. It, it like, I had to close my eyes. because It was so bright. And I heard dad run down the hall and my mom just goes, well, 
maybe that was grandmama. Maybe that. And I think she kind of panicked a little bit because she didn't know how to explain it to her eight, nine year old daughter, you know, but I felt peace too. And to mm -hmm. this day, I do believe that was either my grandmother or some spirit from the, you know, it was, it didn't, the light didn't scare me. It felt very, I felt I, in that moment before it happened, I was feeling sad and, and fear, fear and sadness at the same time. And once that light came down the hall, I fell asleep very easily. It felt very peaceful. And, you know, and hearing my mother the next day retell that story exactly as I had experienced it as well for me at eight or nine years old was very validating yeah. and um and the light was so incredibly bright you guys like it was just it was it was bright light um and so yeah and so at that young of an age even though our house was haunted a lot of places that you already know there's ghosts you already hear my mama told me my first ghost story when i was like four years old you know like you, you know these things but having that experience with something that's not necessarily a ghost but something much pa more powerful um, really does give you that peace knowing that this is this is just a blip. This life is just an experience for now and there's more to our souls than than um than what we what we're told by the matrix, what we're told by by society. So um yeah, it, it gives you that. And in times when I feel myself stressed out, I just remember back to that. Like this is not the end all be all. This is just an experience. Oh, completely. And I think that's one of the really important things to remember. It's like when you know, you know. And and there's so much in this this truth of world where we sort of say, well, we know this to be true, not be true. But when you really know, there's no, there's seriously no doubt. It's not from an intellectual place at all. It's from a much deeper internal place that you can't even. Well, for me, I can't even pinpoint where my body is. Just an absolute hundred percent knowing. And I use that a lot now. That feeling to sort of say, when I'm thinking, do I believe this? Do I not believe this? that's where I go to is does it give me that same sort of feeling? Yeah. That gnosis, that just inner knowing yeah. it's like once you see it, you can't unsee it. There's mm. no way to explain this. Um, and so it, it's, it's for those little, little times in your life where the, the other side beyond the veil has uh, allowed itself to be shown to you. I think, I think those are so special. We, the law of one actually does talk about this. I think like more Cassiopeians that for entities that are in a different density so after they've left this this existence for them to come back to third density from wherever they are it takes a lot of energy for them to do that yeah. that's like ghosts. guess why you only see ghosts like every now and again you know and so if one of your loved ones from the other side has taken the time to either manifest as a light or come through a medium has mm. used as much energy as they could to speak to you how special is that that's how loved you are, absolutely. you know, and um, absolutely. And there's so many examples of people where you you couldn't you just literally couldn't make the things up. You know, there's some like anything. There's always scammers and there's always really talented people like, like any walk of life. But, you know, again, when you hear something, you literally couldn't make up if you tried. And, um, you know, I was watching something on telly. I walked out and refused to watch it with my husband because they were talking about in the Middle Ages. Well, it wasn't even the Middle Ages. It was after that where they used to hung, draw and quarter them. Mm -hmm. You know, brutal, brutal. we think we're living in the, the most difficult times ever. Try speaking up. Try censorship back in those times because that's what it was. Anyone who went yeah. against their religion and refused to denounce it, was hung, drawn, and quartered. And if you don't know what that is, look it up and you won't. It's brutal. I so it went, our censorship off YouTube and everywhere else is, it is nothing compared to that. I watched, so I love history. I've watched the Tudor series um, that was done in the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, I went back. So my boyfriend has just found out with, through his genealogy that he's a descendant of Sir Thomas More. If you guys don't know who he was, he's kind of a big deal back in the court of Henry VIII and Henry VII, his father, he wrote Utopia. Um, and he was brutally executed for not taking, for basically not agreeing to bow down to Anne Boylan um, as yeah. this, the, he was a, a staunch Catholic. And so I had my boyfriend, we sat down because he's not really into history, but he thought it was kind of cool that he has these like famous people in his 
his lineage. And so I was like, well, let's watch the Tudor series. I've watched it before um, because, you know, you know, if HBO or Showtime are going to make a series about your family, you come from a pretty fucked up family. <laughs> if they, if, the, if those networks can make a whole series. And so, you know, and I, I forgot every time I watched that series, there's so many people being ex. I have a hard time. I get so, so emotional. Being brutally executed. Brutally. For stupid stuff. And, and yeah, I, I'll give a little, I, I guys, um, if you're on Gnostic TV um, for next week, I'm just editing it up now. I did a deep dive because we're studying and on, on my series on Gnostic, we're doing a lot of Appalachian stories and I did a deep dive into the truth. You guys, do you remember the Blair Witch Project? Yeah. So I was, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you guys. There has to be more to the story because we're told it's all fake. We know it's, it was actors. We know that now. Spoiler alert. It was not what happened. It wasn't real footage found. But I did a deep dive into where the Blair Witch Project, where that inspiration came from. And it does come from an actual story that revolves around the witch trials. And that, that they had witch trials in the UK. They had them here in America. They had them in oh, yeah. It was brutal. It was brutal for people who just were a little bit weird. I mean, we probably were... Oh, definitely. I mean, I, you know, I know you could, you can, when you know, your mind will put play tricks to you. So this is an, uh, a knowing like the other things I've heard, but I've always hated my head going underwater. And I can, again, pretty vivid memories of being dunked with them in the witch trials. But that could be my imagination. It's not the same level of knowing of the others. So you know, that's sure just something I like to laugh about. Yeah. I know I, I cannot stand um, having anything too tight on my neck, like a turtleneck oh, yeah. or a, a choker necklace. Or even when I get my hair cut, I'm constantly like pulling. It really bothers me. I start to have a panic attack. And I, and I was telling somebody, I was like, I don't know why. They're like, probably because you were hanged in past life. Like mm -hmm. you probably had, you probably experienced that. And that's what that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then my sisters made it worse because they'd always dunk me and hold me under the water. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sister's bullied me a lot. Um, that would but, be a fun poll to take. How much trauma do you have from a past life versus how much trauma do you have from your siblings? From your siblings, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but no, so there's all these things, and I, I think it's really fascinating. But for me, this is why I love, you know, investigating the Gnostic traditions and things like this. And I wouldn't say I agree with all of it. You know, there's still some real things like we're told energy can't be created or controlled. I don't think that's true. Uh, created or destroyed right, yeah. I, I don't think that's true personally can't prove it to any of you so it's not that I believe everything they say but I love it you know certainly on the times side of things that you know we're all somehow living in these parallel universes and you can affect the past you know everyone says you can't change your past well actually I there's can. lots of evidence yeah. to show that you can change your past uh, you've only got to look at the Mandela effect for that um and um also literally about almost being like i don't know the only way i can describe it is a wormhole or a channel you know to sort of going in suddenly you're transported back into a different time and then the other thing why i really make the most of what's going on now because when you look into these other things that have gone on in different areas of history i always say you know as a mother of a young man you know that the absolute terror of sending your son off to fight in the trenches it would just be horrendous and he'd have definitely been sent off because he's exactly the right age my husband had a really funny experience when we did our first shaman shamanic journey now bear in mind my husband knew nothing about shamanic journeys i just dragged him along to one but because he's not got any preconceived ideas he's just completely open either way and he had this incredible shamanic journey about being in the trenches in world war one and there's another whole story around that that involves around petworth house that i'll tell you about another time um that involves me and my husband in a past life so um yeah there's loads of things that happen and to me it just makes you be much more open-minded but equally equally i think it helps you call out the bullshit more yeah absolutely well and that's it too i mean again you know I think a lot of people who have had significant paranormal experiences are the people that, you know, subconsciously, even maybe not even consciously, you realize that there's more to this world yeah. than they're telling you. And so that then I think puts up a barrier of defense, again, probably mostly subconscious when it comes to the greater issues at hand, because it's not, you already know, you already know for sure from your experience that life isn't what they say it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it, 
we, we, you know, in the South, we make a market off of our ghosts. For example, I, I'll put pin this down in the de uh, co uh, description box as well. I covered Oakland Cemetery here in, in, in Atlanta. And um, Oakland Cemetery is a huge tourist spot. It's beautiful. Um, they have festivals there. They have uh, farmer's markets on Saturdays. All, all, it's huge. And um, out of all the cemeteries in the world, Oakland, to me, is the only one that is actually legitimately haunted. And that is because Oakland Cemetery, when it was created... It was a social place. It, people did go and picnic there and the cities revamped it. And so a lot of, you know, you go there and you you, you feel it and you feel, you see that the, the, there's still activity happening there that's not in physical body. And yeah. uh, and you just kind of know. And with that being so, so it's not, it's not, nothing in life is black and white. It's all shades of gray. And talking about changing the past and the future there with reincarnation, there um, is a series of books written by Dr. Brian Weiss, who, um, his first, the first book I read of him was Many Minds, Many Masters. And he, um, I read it in my early 20s. And he, oh, made, hey. it, he's brilliant. He was, he did not mean to be a reincarnation therapist. Like he learned hypnotism to help people to quit smoking. Like he didn't realize the can of worms that he was opening up. But there's one, but I can't remember which book it is where he talks about this, that when he continued to work with clients, he started to realize the more you heal yourself in this life, the more you deal with your crap in this life it then changes the trajectory for your next life. Mm -hmm. So if you don't heal yourself, there's one client in particular where if she did refuse to heal herself in this life, her next life was going to be 10 times harder because the universe was trying to get her to heal some things. But if she did heal herself in this life, the next life she was walking into was going to be very peaceful. And I'll leave it at that. And it was very impactful. Like his point in having people look at the past and look at the future was to get them to recognize the work they needed to do in the here and now. And that's why we're here. Right? We're here to, ex to correct our karma and to course and, and to refine our soul. And if we just ignore it, it's not going to go away. It's just going to come back again in the next life. And so um, it's our choice that we're the drivers in this. We, we make that decision. And so for this woman to be able to see the choices in front of her motivated her to really get down and dirty in this life and, and heal herself in this life so that she could go into a more harmonized existence in the next life. And so that was really impactful reading that. And again, I think Dr. Brian Weiss, bless his heart, as we say down here in the South, he literally was like a scientist who was going to do something to help people quit smoking and boom, for next thing he knows, people are having like regressions done. <laughs> exactly it's it's so fascinating it really is it's really fascinating and i love and and also just open your mind that no one has the wrong uh, the right one answer you know there is no one absolute truth because there's so many different layers and layers upon layers and it's like you know when you're when you're teaching a 14 year old biology it's very different to what you do in your phd yeah. because you just the level of learning and the message so sometimes you know you're told something to make some basics understandable but then you realize it's not really true as you go further up and I think that's for me the lesson of spirituality is you know sometimes the simplification can adjust the message a lot but there's a reason for why you go through these different stages of learning Oh, absolutely and spirituality you guys in the day it's really just about your own spirit and your own yeah. and your own your own understanding of, of 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 what's going on within the spirit within the realm you can't see as far as your your place in that because that is what you know, my friend Cindy and I just did a video the other day about Mola Bunda and Mola Dara and why exercise is important to spirituality and she you know she said something so profound she was like you know you you're already spirit mm. that that's what you are but right now you're in humanity and you got to drop into your humanity because we're talking about the lower chakras. You have to drop into your humanity because you're already spirit. You're already that. You drop into your, your humanity now. And um, so anyway, well, this was fun. I want to do more of these. I love talking it about it. It is really, stuff. it is really good fun because this is the audience we can actually talk it through. And I can't wait to hear some of the stories that you've all got below. And I just love I love this seeing behind the veil that animals have got. It's absolutely oh, yeah. amazing. I mean, we've all had those experiences where your cat stands on end or your dog start barking at something you can't see. And, um, you know, we're so limited in our perception of our smell, of our sight, of our hearing. You know, you've only got to be someone like me that's got very severe hearing loss at certain frequencies 
to understand, well, yeah, even if I have a normal human hearing, it's still completely different to what the other animals can hear in a lot oh, of cases. Absolutely. So, we have that with our dog. Our yoga shawl is haunted. We, I call him Tom. Yeah. We, we have this ghost in our yoga shawl. We think he's from the Civil War because it's right on top of an old, an old battlefield. And Ravi's fully aware yeah. that, that that ghost, he's fully aware, very responsive yeah. to, to that ghost. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to ask fun. our audience, you guys, if you can, if, if, if you want to share any stories in the comment section, I personally love these stories. I love, I could listen to ghost stories and paranormal experiences all day. I think it's just fascinating. Um, if you feel comfortable sharing your stories in the comment section, please do. Um, you never know who you're going to help or who's going to feel more confident in their own experiences, hearing your experience. And um, if you guys want us to do more of these, let, yeah, us, let us know. It's fun. It's nice to do something fun and lighthearted. I know some of the subject matters that uh, messages come across as serious, but you know, it, it just makes you realize that for me, the biggest gift of getting older is just to release the pressure to know. Yeah. So freeing. Sometimes not knowing is the best place to be because then there's many possibilities, right? When you know something, there's no possibilities, but when you don't know something, oh, <laughs> there's many possibilities. She's so beautiful. She sees everything. She's beautiful. Don't tell anyone about the bunny you caught, though. <laughs> they won't like you, Mitzi. Yeah, but it's just, um, oh, she's so adorable. Um, but, yeah, it's it's great fun. So let us know your stories below, and then we can um, see how we get on, can't we? Yeah. We can, we can uh, I'll tag some other of my recent pair, guys. I shared a time I experienced a skinwalker in the Appalachians. I'll share all that down, down below, you guys. And we can continue talking about this stuff and doing deep dives into these experiences if you want to. Just let us know. And hopefully, hopefully, if you share your story or, or hearing one of our stories, it's helped people find peace with their own experiences. Um, you're not crazy. I'll go. I believe you. I'm just telling you watching. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. So, all right, you guys. Well, I also have all of Catherine's information down in the description box below. Make sure you are subscribed to Catherine um, because we do do these bi-weekly. And again, check your subscriptions too because we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Sometimes YouTube unsubscribes people from channels. So just double check that as well, you guys. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.